Welcome everyone back to weekly weather updates and today we're going to have a look at uh, quite a few models for the prospects of some very cold conditions next weekend. Now it's still uncertain how cold it gets uh, and sort of the, the way we get to the very cold but it's looking more and more likely that it will be happening, that we will be seeing cold weather with the chances of snow uh, increasing from about Friday, Saturday onwards next week. So we'll first run through the GFS, which has been the, bull the most bullish uh, run so far, or model so far, sorry, in forecasting this uh, colder spell. And it's shown some exceptional runs, sort of mirroring the beast in the east. Uh, it has backtrack from those very extreme runs, but it's still showing some very cold conditions, even all the way up to 384 hours. So we'll run through the current run, and you see... Generally, uh, quite a uh, unsettled but mild pattern for this week. Still a chance of maybe a bit of snow further northwards on the northern edge of some of these areas of low pressure. But as you see, we've got this area of low pressure that sort of lingers over the top of the country. Now, this is where all, well, a lot of the uh, model confusion is coming from next weekend. Some models, like the GFS, will allow this low to drop into Europe and then pull the winds into the east. And we've got some very cold air to our northeast ready to tap into it. Other models, like the ECMWF in recent days, has allowed this low to linger. So we never really pull in an easterly, uh, colder easterly wind, and eventually it uh, higher pressure topples, and we sort of go back into a westerly pattern. So it's very weird seeing that. But I can say the ECMWF has kind of flipped back from that, and it's now going colder, but it's not going the same sort of easterly winds that some of these other models are going for. But we'll have a look at the ECMWF later on. On this current GFS, you see, Low pressure does mingle around for a little bit before it does drop into Europe. We start to bring in a brisk but very cold easterly wind with some big Greenland uh, and Atlantic blocking. You see minus 10 line engulfs the whole country. And it, there's a bit of milder air to the south. And as long as that stays offshore, it would be providing weather fronts, which could allow for some more persistent uh, and heavier snow in the southwards, in the, in the southern part of the country. So we have to just have to watch that. Looking at that for the last few days, it'll be um, something to look at nearer the time. As we move beyond that, we will maintain easterly winds, high pressure retrogressing up towards Greenland, and we maintain this sort of northerly flow. Very cold air sits over the top of the country and to our northeast, so it'll be very cold by this point. Even though the upper airs are not getting down to very, very cold, on the surface it'll be quite cold, considering we've had a good five days worth of very cold conditions. Beyond that, it does go a bit uh, different. A bit more milder air tries to push up in the south for high pressure builds in. And we maintain sort of an easterly wind, but it's coming more from the southeast direction. So it's a bit milder, but still quite cold in the north. Again, this sort of pattern is a bit stagnant, and it can go really any way from here. Um, and the high pressure builds back to our north, and it could be going back into another spell of easterly winds. You can see very cold air lurking to our north again. So the GFS is maintaining quite cold for this whole run, really. So very interesting to see with that. Uh, now we'll have a look at the GM run, which has been along the same line to the GFS in the last few days. But again, it's not the exact same sort of pattern. Even up until Saturday, Sunday next week, they're not, showing the, uh, not really showing the same thing. They're still cold, and we'll have a look through that. So... As we run through southwesterly winds, of course, this week, and then it's all about this low pressure next weekend. The GF uh, GM doesn't move it on too much, but it does drop to our south eventually, and we do have big green and blocking, we have cold air to our northeast, and we do start to pull colder air in towards the end of the run. Some bitterly cold air towards the end of the run, but it takes a bit of work getting there, because uh, the low, low pressure does sit just a bit further north than on the GFS run. So although it's a very similar pattern, uh, in terms of blocking, etc. It's not, it's going colder, but it's not the same pa uh, pattern, uh, not, not the same sort of setup, as even out to about 144 hours. Completely different to what GFS was showing. This GFS was showing this air of low pressure just dropping southwards and we we're pulling in the northeasterly wind, easterly wind. So, yeah, it's very, very confusing at the moment, but they are, most of the models are trending colder. Uh, for next weekend, just, just they're just having they're struggling really to to, to resolve the blocking, um, 
and yeah, by the end of the run, it's still very blocked, and it's likely to still be quite cold, um, widely quite cold as well, um, but just just probably not as severe as the GFS run, and probably um, might not have as widespread uh, cold uh, conditions for snow as such. It'll still be quite cold, regardless of where you are with the sort of northerly or easterly flow. Just might not be quite cold enough for snow. We'll now have a look at the ECMWF, which has been a very interesting run over the last few days, as it's been very much against what a lot of the other models are going for. So with uh, me, a lot of forecasters, including me, uh, and people of interest, looking at these um, looking at these weather models, I thought, yeah, we're going to go cold next weekend, but it's always been the ECMWF, which has sort of stopped people saying, uh, definitely going cold, because it has really been against mo most of the other models. But today, on the midday run, it has trended colder, as we see. The air low pressure sort of sits to our east before it does drop into Europe, and we do start to pull in the easterly flow. Now, the jet stream is a bit more active further to our south, so we do start to pull up a bit more milder air. But the cold air is so close to our east that it could provide a big snow event there. And you just subtly swift, uh, shift this pattern, and we would be pulling in some very cold air. So the ECMWF has trended generally colder, so it's going along the lines of the other models where we do have northern blocking and we're, we're pulling in bouts of sort of north or easterly winds, just not as quite as sustained as the GFS run. Quite similar to the GEM run, um, but again, both both GEM and the ECMWF have been flip flopping between uh, very cold, uh, the, at least the GEM has been flip flopping between very cold and the pattern we've seen now. And the ECMWF is probably maybe its uh, coldest run in a good couple of days. We'll next have a look at the icon model, and we're just really looking at this just to just to show you the, the model um, the disparity uh, even towards sort of day seven. And as you can see, it's more of a high resolution model, so you'd expect it to forecast this much better, like in the three or four day time frame. Considering it's still seven days out, I wouldn't say it's in prime position. But, you know, it's still another model, still another computer run. And as you can see, as we get to next Friday, we are pulling in quite a cold easterly wind with an air of low pressure with that, with big northern blocking, bitterly cold air engulfing the UK, so very similar to the GFS run. Um, before the end of the run, we got a bridge of high pressure over the top of us with cold northeasterly winds that will be driving in snow showers, especially toward the east and southeast, where we see this air of low pressure. So, yeah, very interesting... Uh, from the icon there, going towards the sort of pattern the GFS is showing. We'll now have a look at the UK Met Office run. Again, that's been quite reluctant to go very cold, just like the ECMWF, so that's why, you know, it hasn't been guaranteed cold next weekend. But again, the UK Met has trended colder, not bitterly cold easterly winds like we're seeing with some of the other runs, like the GFS and the icon, and the icon just showed you. But as we trend towards 144 hours, you see big northern blocking, low pressure, just trying to bring in an easterly wind. Now, it's not a typical, like, bitterly cold easterly, but again, northern blocking to our north, northern blocking uh, plus lower pressure to our south is providing a cold earth flow. So it definitely would be colder on this UK Met Office run, just not quite as cold as some of the other models at the moment. We'll now switch over to Meteo Seal, as it has more models on there we have a look at. So we have a look at the JMA model, model which is the... Uh, Japanese uh, model, um, and it hasn't quite updated, but it's updated sort of to the relevant time frame for next weekend's easterly, a potential easterly. So as we run through, very similar patterns to all the other models, of course, and then you see the northern blocking starting to build, and then by next Saturday, we're starting to pull in those easterly winds, and we're pulling in quite a strong and cold easterly wind there, with higher pressure to our north. So again, very similar to the Icon and the GFS. If we have a look at the upper airs, it's not particularly high resolution, um, but it would just, still just show you where the, the, the colder air is sitting. As we trend through, you see the minus 8 gets through the whole country, minus 5, minus 6, and you can see generally 192 hours, you see darker blues there, that's the minus 10 line getting through. So yeah, very cold on the JMA run. So yeah, JMA, JMA is supporting the GFS and the Icon model, and then you've sort of, uh, and then you sort of got the UK Met, GM, uh, ECMWF, which are all cold, but not showing this more, uh, very, uh, not showing this very cold easily that we're seeing on some of the other models. We'll lastly have a look at the 
NASA model uh, for Europe. Uh, we'll run through that quickly. Again, it's another, another model I haven't shown before, but it's just another computer model just shows you uh, what sort of uncertainty there still is. See, very similar to the GMA pulling nor uh, high pressure to our north, northern blocking, that area of low pressure starts to move to the south and we start to pull in an easterly wind, quite cold easterly wind there, and we'll have a look at the upper areas in a minute. And you'll see a big area of high pressure to our north, tucking in those easterly winds and then more high pressure building, again pushing further north and that could start another bout of easterly winds. If we have a look at the upper airs, you can see, again, not the highest resolution model, but again, it still generally shows you uh, where the air masses are are sitting. As we head towards the weekend, you see very cold air starting to seep towards the UK. See, you see these little minus 12 dots that are showing the very cold air is getting close to the UK. And we are putting in some bitterly cold air um, towards the early next week. And you see low pressure tries to push in from the Atlantic, uh, higher pressure push, in, and then towards the end of the run, you see this high pressure push. And again, we're remaining very cold. And again, this NASA model run is going very, very cold indeed towards sort of from next weekend into the middle of the of next week. So, yeah, very cold conditions on on some of these other models. So, yeah, it's still quite uncertain, really. We'll lastly, have a look at the GFS ensembles, um, which again shows in the GFS run, but it's run many times with different starting conditions, just to resemble what the uncertainty is. Again, the GFS ensembles are going very cold. Um, sort of 7th, 8th of February, getting down to an average of about minus 8 and minus 9, which is bitterly cold and would provide days where it would be maybe only 1 or 2 degrees, maybe even colder in London and would allow anything falling out of the sky. Even if you were coastal areas, uh, would be likely falling wintry and as snow. So, it does trend a bit milder in the longer term. However, again, there's still a lot of colder, colder runs. And you can see generally there's a good three, four, five day patch there potentially, where we could be remaining very, very cold. If we have a look at the two meter temperatures and precipitation, you can see again London only one or two degrees high for a good two or three days before trending a little bit upwards. But again, that's being uh, pushed up by some milder outliers. One measure of the air mass is the dew point, which resembles how, how it is very uh, bitterly cold air mass coming from the east. Dew point is getting down to potentially minus five, which is very cold, especially to the south of the country, considering normally we're hoping for just below freezing to get snow. Minus five would guarantee precipitation really falling uh, as wintry uh, uh, anywhere, really, in the UK and it remains around or below freezing all the way to the end of the run. So it shows you a lot of the, air model, uh, the, a lot of the computer models are, um, uh, or the ensemble members, are keeping the, uh, the dew point very low, which is symbolic of a very cold air mass staying in and around the UK. So even some of the members earlier, when you look at the a HPA temperatures, going a bit milder, or at least trending upwards to maybe minus 5, minus 4 degrees at, uh, degrees at 850 HPA, it actually... The air mass is remaining very cold still. Lastly, we'll have a look at the snow image, and that's what we're all we're all hoping for. You can see a lot of snow spikes around during that period again, and it will be very much down to the position of areas of low pressure, uh, or little features, and any convective showers. And again, that sort of stuff is very much forecasting a, a day or two before. So we'll have a look at that more towards the end of the week. So yeah, thanks for watching. It's very much looking like we are going to be seeing a colder spell of weather next weekend, potentially the coldest spell of weather we've had in a number of years. Going back to the beast from the east probably is the last time we saw very cold conditions uh, coming uh, coming to across the whole of the country. It's looking like it's going to go very cold, just how prolonged it's going to go and whether it's going to be a big easterly wind or whether it's just going to be generally cold rest sitting in the north and maybe coming further southwards we'll really just have to see and just hope and uh, just have to see what the models have, uh, come up with and hopefully to, with the next day or two you'd hope that the models would start to agree on at least a pattern for next weekend as we still don't know whether it's going to be a quite a cold easterly wind coming off the continent and from Scandinavia or whether it will be sort of more of an easterly flow as the low pressure doesn't clear so yeah, very, very interesting 
um, computer model runs, and it's really just one to keep uh, up with that, up to date with. I wouldn't at the moment look at apps or look at sort of your BBC weather, longer range forecasts. Uh, as again, they trend. Uh, they normally just look at one model run or once or one ensemble run. Again, the only things I'd really look at at the moment are the models yourself, uh, and uh, I'd stay tuned for Met Office 10 day trend, which will be coming out um, next week. I think, it's, I think it's Tuesday or Wednesday it comes out. Um, as they they trend, uh, they, they normally show you the trends rather than uh, forecast it. They normally show you what sort of patterns we're going to be seeing and they give you different scenarios. So they'll very much likely uh, give you the. Uh, expert and professional standpoints from what they're seeing but at the moment it's definitely looking like we are going to be look turning colder so anyway thanks for watching hope you enjoyed subscribing you and i'll see you again for another video soon